Having studied in the National Institute of Design in India, which was a Bauhaus style design school, I think multidisciplinarity has always been an integral part of my work. On one hand, I was very influenced by notable image makers and storytellers who were creating radical visions of the future. But on the other side, um, I was very uh, heavily influenced also by the Eames Report, which was created by Charles and Ray Eames, the founders of NID. And the Eames Report was regarded almost as a sacred piece of text, and it kind of emphasized um, what was quite obvious at that point, that young designers in India need to be aware of the context within which they are working, which was that of an economically fragile, recently independent state, and that um, we needed to think about how design could become an essential ingredient in innovation. And so when I came to study interaction design at the Royal College of Art in London, I think I was interested in finding a space which would uh, allow both those uh, aspirations to come together, a space for magic alchemy provocation on one side and people, communities, making and building on the other. Essentially, we are living in what one might call the black swan country, where chaos and complexity seem to have become the operating parameters of the new normal. Within this, you are starting to see the rise of the maker culture, from all the way from fab toys and jewellery to making your own sort of autonomous um, drones and synthesizing DNA at home. And there is this whole sort of rise in crowdsource funding. These might appear to be sort of weak signals in um, at, the, at the moment, especially within a sort of industrialized setup of products and services that we use today. But what happens when these weak signals start becoming mainstream? Where does that leave the design profession, especially when designing, making, manufacturing and distribution starts to get easier? Uh, who is the icon and who is the maker of the iconic products? I think at Superflux, we are really interested in these challenges and we find them extremely exciting because um, it doesn't remain so much about the big um, auteur genius uh, designer, uh, but it's more about the network, about architectures of collaboration and participation. I grew up in the late 70s, early 80s in an India which was very much a sort of socialist yet conservative um, uh, sort of government where the basic hopes and needs of the community were still being met whether you're talking about getting a television or a, or a car or a telephone on one side but then all our sort of um, community engagements, all our sort of fantasies were built around these ancient mythological scriptures, history, um, or, or, around um, anti-gravitational machines or sort of uh, iconic mythological figures. So this whole sort of juxtaposition of the basic needs of a community with the fantastical has played a, a key role in shaping my worldview. And each time I keep going back and forth between India and the UK, these influences only get stronger. The reason we want to do the lab work alongside consultancy is because it allows us to research, collaborate and partner. It allows us to keep a progressive design agenda, allows us to explore unexpected opportunities and brings vision and freshness to the consulting work as well. And yeah, of course, keeps us creatively and intellectually sustained. Um, and the sweet spot is, of course, the space when we are able to find projects that start moving from consultancy to the lab and from the lab to the consultancy, because that's where often the most relevant and impactful work is created. And finally, it's about rhythm and pacing, I think. By having a mix of projects going on at any one time, there can be unexpected collisions and cross-fertilization of ideas. And also having a, a set of multiple projects that have different sorts of clients, that have different sorts of economic and um, business models bring structural resilience to our, um, to our studio, uh, allowing us to be flexible in any sort of economic volatility. Mm -hmm.